Hi there, folks, and welcome to another Workspace Wednesday right here on Lean Strategies International LLC, where you can find solutions that ignite your power. Now, before we get started, if you're interested in tips with Google Workspace, Google Sheets, Google Docs, or any of those sorts of technology, please hit the subscribe button so that you can be sure to get all sorts of videos as they come up right in real time. Now this week we're going to be answering a question uh, and the question is related to our progress chart series. It is, how do you change the individual step colors? For example, step one, step two, step three, each time you click a checkbox on your progress chart. So you'll see here that um, we have different uh, progress charts that are available um, for each of the rows and there are check boxes that are set up and so in this one we see that there's two check box if we take one off it'll turn red if we put another one on it's yellow third one is green same thing here and so we want it to be able to change colors with each step is what's being asked here so let's figure out how to do that and before we do, there's going to be a few things that you need to set up that will just make the process a little bit easier. So first of all, let's go ahead and delete all of our functions. And you'll need to insert your checkboxes here. So what we would do is we would just come down and insert checkboxes. Of course, they're already there. Now when you click on a checkbox, you'll see that one that's checked is true. One that's not checked is false. So we're going to use that to create our progress chart. And we're going to use three different functions. Uh, those functions are going to be a sparkline function, a count if function, and a switch function. It's a little bit complicated, so hang tight here. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select the colors that we're going to use in our function. Now for us, we're gonna use red, yellow, and green. And we need to get their hex code so that we can use that in our function. So what I'm gonna do is set up a cell here like you see. And the way you get the hex code is you hit on the fill and we'll go to custom. And then you can kinda of enter the shade wherever you want by moving this around. You'll see the hex code down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just select this one right here. I'll copy it and then just as a reference point we'll go ahead and hit OK. It'll change the box to the color. We'll put the hex code there for our function later on because we're going to point back to it. Now let's get started with our function and the first thing we're going to use to create our progress chart is our sparkline function. So we're going to go ahead and type in sparkline and you'll see that some tips will show up. We're going to kind of disregard those. We'll hit our open bracket. Now we're going to use our count if function. So we enter count if. We're going to open another bracket. And what we want to count are these cells right here. So we're going to go ahead and select C2 through E2. And we're going to say that we want the criterion to be counted to be true. So if they're checked, then that would be true. So we have, uh, it'll count them if the box is marked true or if it's checked off. Then we're gonna close this out and we're gonna put in a comma, which will have us jump back to our sparkline function. And we're gonna put in some of our options here. Now what we wanna do is put a curly bracket to start our options, because these are the different options that are gonna drive our chart. Um, and the first thing we're going to define is what chart type we want. So to do that, we're going to type in chart type. And because it's a word, we're going to put it in quotes. And we're going to put a comma. And we want to use that bar uh, chart type. And we'll put that in quotes again. And we're going to put another comma. And I'm sorry, we're going to chain this together. So we're going to put in a semicolon um, to do that. Now what we want to do is define the max number that we're counting to. So we're going to put in the word max. 
Once we have that in, then we'll put in a comma. Now the max that we can get is right here. One, two, three. So our max in this case will be three. And once we have that, we're gonna put in another semicolon because we wanna chain some more together. So now we're gonna to start to define the color portion of our function. And to do that, to set it up, we first wanna use the word color just like uh, the other, some of the other videos that we created progress charts in. And then we're gonna put in a comma. And once we have that, now we're gonna start working with our switch function. And what the switch function is gonna do, it's gonna allow us to change the color based on how many of these checkboxes are marked true. So you'll go ahead and enter in switch. You'll see that'll pop up. And for this one, we're going to put an open bracket. Now, when do we want the colors to switch is the next portion that we're gonna define. We want them to switch if a checkbox is marked true and not switch if a checkbox is marked false. So to do that, we need to use our count if function again. And what we're going to ask it to switch based on is this same formula right here. So we're gonna select C2 through E2, those cells. And then we're going to say we wanna switch the color if it's true. So we're gonna stick in true. We'll close that off and put a comma because we're gonna keep going with our function. Now what we want to do is define uh, if our count if, say, counts three. So if all three of these cells are true, what color do we want it to be? And this is where we're going to refer back to the colors we've already selected. Now in our case, if all three are done, we want to refer back to K5. And you should lock these out. Uh, because you always want to point back to these cells. Now the next thing we want to do is define what color do we want it to be if two of them are marked true. In our case, we're going to say K4. And again, we're going to lock these out. And then we're going to define what color we want it to be if only one is marked true. Now if one is marked true, we want our red hex code right here. So we're gonna point back to K3. Once we have that, we'll lock it out. Now the final thing we wanna do is if there's none, and we don't really want anything to happen, so we don't have to worry about it because it's really not gonna count it if there's nothing there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just point back to K3 again. And that will be our color if nothing is defined but of course it's going to be blank because our progress char will not will not be progressing if nothing is checked true so once we have that now we're ready to close our function out and test it out now to do this we first need to close our uh, colors with a closed bracket then we need to put in our curly bracket because we're closing off this chart type right here. And then we need to close the entire function out with one more closed bracket. So let's hit enter. And you'll see that we get two of them right there. And if we take one off, it should change to red. And if we check both of them, it should go to green. So we can see that our progress chart is working. I'm gonna go ahead and drag this down and we'll see it automatically populate. We'll check a couple more. And you see that if nothing's there, it's just gonna be completely clear. So that's how you change a progress chart colors based on the number of checkboxes that are selected. And that's all for this week's video. I hope it answered your question. As always, if you have some more questions about Google Worksheets, go ahead and uh, comment down below and we'll do our best to get back to them and make a video for you. Please like the video, share it with your friends so that we can spread knowledge to everyone. We'll see you right back here on Lean Strategies International, LLC.